I'm in the ancient market town of Clitheroe in the Ribble Valley in Lancashire. Clitheroe dates back to Saxon times, so by the time the imposing 12th century Norman castle that towers over the town had been built, Clitheroe had already been around for nearly 1,000 years. Clitheroe Castle, said to be the smallest Norman castle in England, is now home to a museum, which can be found in the steward's house, built in the 18th century. It is a museum of local history, which underwent a three and a half million pound refurbishment, starting in 2007, and opened to the public in May 2009. There are 16 acres of landscaped gardens in the castle grounds, with attractions to appeal to every age group. They include a bandstand, children's playground, skate park, and Lancashire's first labyrinth. The Rose Garden also features quirky metal and limestone sculptures. It has been suggested that Clitheroe Castle may have been first built before 1086. It consists of one of the smallest keeps in the country, and at one time it was surrounded by a curtain wall. It was anciently the seat of the Lords of Boland. There is a legend that the devil threw a boulder from Pendle Hill and hit the castle, creating the hole visible in its side today. Well, I'm staying here in Clitheroe for a few nights whilst I'm exploring different parts of Lancashire. And the guest house I'm staying in is called Brooklyn Guest House on Pimlico Road, and it's a really nice place. The actual room I'm staying in is separate from the main house, so it's like its own little annex. So I've got my own front door key, so it really feels private, it's lovely, I've got my own privacy. And whilst I'm here in Lancashire, I must say, there are certainly worse places to stay than here. Clitheroe is well known for its abundance of specialist shops. Award-winning Burns Wine Shop is famous for its enormous underground cellar bursting with unusual vintages from all over the world. Cowman's famous Sausage Shop sells more than 75 sausage varieties, while the Exchange Coffee Company stocks more than 35 coffees and 60 specialist teas.
I've had a wander around Clitheroe, I'm going to move on now. I'm going to do a short circular walk just outside the town. My short walk was to start three miles east of Clitheroe in the village of Downham, which lies under the north side of Pendle Hill. Downham has often been quoted as the most beautiful village in Lancashire. It's certainly very unspoiled. No television aerials, satellite dishes, overhead wires, not even yellow lines on the roadside, and there is minimal signing in the village. It has an old world charm with the setting of the church on the crest of a limestone ridge above the village, Downham Hall behind the church on the same ridge, and cottages neatly arranged at both the top of the church brow and another group around the main street and village stream. The Ashton family is responsible for keeping the village and surrounding well-managed estate in its present unblemished condition. None of the properties on the estate is privately owned. The manor has been in the family's ownership since 1558 and has passed through a direct male line of Ashtons since 1680. pub, the Ashton Arms, and the post office shop and tea rooms cater for visitors all year round. A thriving preschool on the main street uses the former village school premises, and the village hall on Pendle Road is well supported by several local clubs and groups with frequent events and activities. constant flow of tourists and walkers, the village is attractive to filmmakers because of the lack of apparent modernism. The absence of aerials makes it ideal for historical drama and many films have been shot in the village and its surroundings. One of the most famous films was the 1961 Whistle Down the Wind starring Hayley Mills, Bernard Lee and Alan Bates, shot largely at Warsaw End Farm and including local children from Downham and Chatburn schools in the roles of many of the children in the film.
Well, Downham is a lovely village. It's a delight for me to be here because I've always been a great fan of Whistle Down the Wind. It's one of those films I've got on DVD at home and I take it off the shelf every once in a while to watch and I've always loved it. So for me, being in Downham where it was filmed today is an absolute delight. Beginning my short walk, I headed on to the neighbouring village of Chatburn, from where I crossed the fields towards Warsaw Hill. Warsaw Hill. Now Warsaw Hill was used quite heavily in the movement. But more importantly, just around the corner was the main location used in the film. This is Warsaw End Farm. It's a private house now, but in the film, it was used as the home of Hayley Mills's family. And that's the barn where Alan Bates was hiding. I can't express how wonderful it feels to be standing on a film set of one of my favourite films that was made nearly 55 years ago. How wonderful.
I had an easy stroll back to Downham, so I made my way slowly back from Warsaw Hill. Here I am back in delightful Downham. It's just started to rain as I finished the walk. How wonderfully timed was that? Well, Lancashire really does have some lovely parts to the county. And for me, I would say that Downham is one of the jewels of the crown. But it's been a lovely walk today, and particularly I've, ex I've enjoyed and had a real kick out of visiting the locations that were used in Whistle Down the Wind. So I'm now going to finish today by trying one of the local Downham ice creams. Mm -hmm. 